In this video, we're going to use QGIS to map hotspots of kernel density estimates using the Nelson and Boots 2008 methodology and a kernel density surface that we created in a previous YouTube video on the SEER Lab YouTube channel. Following the Nelson and Boots methodology, we can map the hotspots as the upper percentiles of the kernel density estimates. And to do that, we're going to use the color ramp and the symbology inside of the layer properties. To launch the layer properties, we can double click or right click on the name of the file that we're interested in and make some adjustments in the symbology tab. By default, the symbology tab is going to be rendering to a single band grayscale. So our first adjustment is to select a single band pseudo color, since we only have a single band of information in the raster file. Next, we can make some selections that help us identify the percentiles that we're interested in. First, we can select a color ramp. For this demonstration, I'm going to select the red color ramp. Following Nelson and Boots, we can make cutoff decisions by changing the number of bins. If we select equal interval bins instead of continuous bins, the number of classes will decide what range of the kernel density values are in each bin. If we want to look at the upper 10% or the 90th percentile, we can change this to 10 equal intervals and each bin will represent 10% of the distribution of the values. So we can select equal interval, 10 classes, and classify and apply. And now I have a red map in the background. We can see it goes from light to dark red, and those upper dark colors are those higher values of our bins. If we look at the individual bins seen here in the layers box, we can see that we have 10 classes, and each of those represents 10%. The first 10% represented by the first color bin, and so on until we get to the higher bins. So in each case, this would be worth 10% of the distribution. So the highest values, the upper 10%, the highest kernel density estimations are here in this upper dark bin, which is reflected here in the center of our largest concentration of biting flies from this example data set. If we're interested in mapping intervals by 5%, so we can look at the upper 5%, we would simply change the number of classes from 10 to 20, classify, apply, and then each bin would be representative of 5% of the distribution rather than 10% of the distribution from the previous example. The user can then go in and decide which of those bins to map and individual colors can be changed. For example, here with my intervals set at 10, I can select the red to gray. I can then invert that color ramp so that my low kernel density estimate values will be darker gray colors and my high kernel density bins or my hotspots will be red. And if I apply this, I can see that just the upper distribution is identified here in red. I could also apply a gray color ramp and select only my highest bin and change only the color of that bin if I wanted to map only the highest kernel density values in this example. When I apply the red color only to the upper 10%, we can see it's this relatively small portion of the circle identified here in this hotspot. So we could identify this as a hotspot. We should note, of course, this would assume a distribution that is normal or approaches normal uh, for these hotspots to be considered outright.
So as a brief summary, if we want to map hotspots as percentiles of the kernel density estimates, we can use the color ramp, we can switch from grayscale to color, or some combination of grays and colors. We can select equal interval and divide our bins into either 5 or 10 percent by selecting either 20 or 10 equal interval bins and map the hotspots of our choice. Good luck and keep mapping.